Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I'm Connie Hardison, and it is my pleasure to serve on the board at Capital City Unity. Today, we are joining other churches with virtual services to come together to do what we do best, pray, and center ourselves in love and prayer. If you are new to Capital City Unity, we bless and welcome you. We know who you are. You are a child of God. If you would like to know more about us, you can check our website at capitalcityunity.org where you will find a link to our YouTube past meditations and lessons. Or email us at capitalcityunity at gmail.com to be placed on the mailing list. Here is the flow of today's phone-in church service. We will have the reading of the daily word, Then we will bless the names of the people in the prayer box. And please email us if you have someone or something that you would like us to pray for with you. Then we'll do our affirmation, our meditation, Marty's message, the offering, and our closing prayer. So I invite you to enjoy this beautiful day, even as we are continuing to maintain proper social distancing We can still enjoy this beautiful day and nature and all its beauty. Find ways to stay healthy at home and yet remain connected to others as we are connecting with you. Connecting is so important for our well-being. For we believe and we frequently affirm whenever two or more are gathered in my name, I am there. And now I will read the daily word. Today's daily word is faith. I invest my faith only in possibilities for good. The parable of the talents in the Gospel of Matthew tells the story of a wealthy man entrusting sums of money to three of his servants before leaving on a journey. When the man returns, he praises and rewards the two servants who, through wise investments, have doubled the funds entrusted to them. A third servant who, acting in fear, hid the money entrusted to him and received no reward. The divine faculty of faith that is part of my spiritual inheritance is more valuable than money. I invest my faith wisely by believing and trusting that possibilities for good are present even when good has not yet manifested, and I act on that belief. My positively directed faith brings rich rewards in consciousness. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Matthew Chapter 25, verse 21. And now to those affirmations that we say together and know at the core of our being. There is only one presence, one power, one love active in my life. God, the good, omnipotent. Together, there is only one presence, one power, one love active in my life, God, the good, omnipotent. And it is with these words and in this consciousness that we bless the names of all the people in the prayer box, knowing as we speak our affirmations and as we pray today, we hold them in that healing light of love and peace. We bless our healthcare workers, emergency responders, police officers and firefighters, those people who make our world safer today. And on this Memorial Day weekend, we especially bless those who have served in the armed services and fought for our country that we might have better lives. We bless the clerks in the stores, the truck drivers and the farmers who are part of an important distribution system for our health and well-being. Let's affirm together for them There is only one presence, one power, and one love active in your life. God the good, omnipotent. Let's speak that together. There is only one presence, 
one power and one love active in your lives, God the good omnipotent. And there is only one presence, one power and one love active in this ministry, God the good omnipotent. Together, there is only one presence, one power, one love active in this ministry, God the good omnipotent. There is only one presence, one power, one love active in the world today, God the good omnipotent. Together, there is only one presence, one power, one love active in the world today, God the good omnipotent. And we pray, O loving presence, Comfort and heal those who have been touched by dis-ease or disharmony, whether they are in our family, our community, our state, our nation, and our world. Immerse them in love. Lead them through the dark times and into the light. Give them the peace that passes understanding and let them know that they are loved and that love always prevail. Thank you, God. Amen. And now, Gordon, our hymn today is on page 165 in our Wings of Song hymnal, God is Love. Thank you, Gordon. Our meditation today is on love. In his new book, The Wisdom Codes, our friend Greg Braden states the power of love to heal, to free us from the burden of hate, and to catapult us beyond our suffering is a theme that has been recognized, analyzed, and shared 
by the learned masters of the past. 13th century poet Rumi beautifully summarized our relationship with God or universal source. Rumi says, your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. Greg Braden further states that these words remind us that we already have love power within us. We are born with love. Our job is to discover everything about ourselves that is not love. The more we allow love to heal the hurt in our lives, the more we discover the depth of our capacity to love ourselves and others. An excellent way to increase our own love capacity is to give gratitude and appreciation for our good. Although we may not yet fully see that good wholly manifest in our lives, it is to feel compassion for others and their struggles, knowing that the light of love resides and shines within them as well as ourselves. We are not separate. We are one. Masaru Emoto, who wrote the best-selling book, The Hidden Messages in Water, states, If you fill your heart with love and gratitude, you will find yourself surrounded by so much that you can love and that you can feel grateful for, and you can even get closer to the life of health and happiness that you seek. Elder and Kahuna, Hale Makua says, when love moves out, fear moves in. And in the Bible we are told, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so I could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. 1 Corinthians Chapter 13, verse 2. So now as we prepare for our meditation on love, I invite you to sit comfortably in your seats at home and just close your eyes. Let your breath be in and out, slowly and easy, as is comfortable for you. If you like, you can breathe into the count of four Hold to the count of four, and then exhale to the count of eight. Remember that the exhale breath is the one that most relaxes us and prepares us for our meditation. Now I invite you to visualize a golden white light just above the top of your head. There is no right or wrong way to do this. So do it as you visualize it. So this white light just above the top of your head is shimmering brightly. This is our connection to the source. Allow this beautiful light to enter through the top of your head and then float down through each of your energy centers or chakras on its way to your heart so you allow it to come down through the third eye and pause there a moment and then down through the throat and then into your heart let this light settle gently in your heart and see and feel it radiating and shining brightly out from your heart center our magnificent heart is a portal for love. Just sit with this and let your heart light shine out from you for a few moments. Feel that love and peace and healing power and grace that you already are. Be aware of any places you may feel resistance in your heart. And just Allow that feeling to float on through and then away. You are aware of what needs to be forgiven, what needs to be loved, for you are love. Put your hand on your heart and say, I am loving. I am loved. I am love. 
Let's speak that together for ourselves. I am loving. I am loved. I am loved. Now let's affirm that for others. You are loving. You are loved. You are loved. Let's say that together. You are loving. You are loved. You are loved. Now, let that radiant light move down from your heart and down through the rest of your body. Feel the vibration of the love and power of that light as it travels down through the rest of your energy centers, the solar plexus, the sacrum, the root chakra, and down your legs and into your feet, which represent understanding. Now allow that light to brighten even more fully, coming up through the bottoms of your feet and up through your legs and your knees and your thighs and allow it to come up your back to the top, the crown of your head. Feel the power and love of this light that is you, folks. It is you. Know that you are loved. Feel it. Believe it. Trust it. And now as you rest in the arms of divine love, I invite you to listen to this beautiful poem by Janine Miller Delaney that is in the current daily word for May and June. It is entitled, As I Awaken Today in Love. May I remember what I am, for I am spirit. May I remember where I am, for I am in the mind of God. May I allow myself to awaken in this natural state, for in my natural state, there is no effort at all. And so I arrive in grace each moment, now and in the next, simply as I am, completely whole, safe, and love itself. May I allow the ego mind to remain resting on my bedstand for I choose to value nothing of myself today but the love I am. May I breathe easy, my body relaxed, and each cell awaken to the joy and peace of arriving in grace each moment of this day. And so as we gently bring our consciousness to this back to this present time and place, and we wiggle our fingers and toes and stretch our body, whatever is comfortable for us, and come back to this present moment in time. We give thanks, Divine Presence, for the gift of love in ourselves that is ever growing and ever unfolding and radiating your light of love through us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Thank you so much for that, Connie. Thank you for this uh, reminder that only love prevails and that love is an indwelling experience within our bodies right here and right now. Thank you also for reminding us that one way for us to remind ourselves of the prevalence of love is through gratitude practice. And I'd like to expand on that by talking about this Memorial Day that uh, we'll be uh, celebrating tomorrow. Because in fact, Memorial Day is a gratitude practice. So in that spirit, just to share some thoughts. We, of course, all know that Memorial Day is a long time American tradition, dates back to the aftermath of the Civil War. And in those days, and for many years, it was known as Decoration Day, because that referred to the tradition of honoring the dead by visiting and decorating the graves. 
Now, in this period of social stress generated by the still unknown dimensions of the lethality of this Wuhan COVID-19 pandemic, we can get just a little taste of what our ancestors went through during the Civil War. Because in that period, over 620,000 of us died, died of wounds and disease during the four years that the war lasted. Two thirds of all those deaths were from diseases, not bullets. Diseases that like today's virus then had no known cure. Dysentery, typhoid, measles, pneumonia, syphilis, it was an average of 13,000 Americans died on combat duty every month for 48 months. If we were to do a proportion of today's population, that would be the equivalent of 125,000 people dying every month for four years. Just to compare, during the past two and a half months, we have suffered 90,000 COVID deaths. So even though our population back then was only 9% of what it is today, we were far, far, far less prepared to handle the magnitude of the dead and wounded casualties of war. This was overwhelming, particularly to the civilian population. Still by 1865 at the war's end, this grim business of disposing of the bodies of our dead soldiers and sailors had become somewhat organized and after all, Millions were mourning their dead husbands, fathers, sons, brothers, friends. Then as now, it was the custom when visiting the grave of a loved one to bring flowers or a written poem or prayer, maybe a small statue or some other physical marker to decorate the grave as a memorial from the survivors. With hundreds of thousands of soldiers' graves north and south to tend to, Eventually states and finally the national government designated a specific day, May 30th, to commemorate all those who have died in the military service of our country. And that's a lot of people. In all the wars that this country has committed soldiers and sailors to fight in, we have suffered an accumulated total of 1.35 million deaths. Over 1,350,000 of us have died in military service to our country. Some of these are buried in military cemeteries here in this country or in uh, other parts of the world. Some are buried in local church or city graveyards, and some were never found or identified. Yet every one of these dead men and women was a family member, a friend, a creative force whose life had come to an abrupt and unexpected end in service to our country. Some of these were forced to serve via the draft, but the vast majority volunteered to fight. It's now been 45 years since the end of the Vietnam War, almost 10 years since U.S. forces ended combat duties in Iraq. And of course, still Americans are going in harm's way in Afghanistan this very day. Over the course of the years since Lee surrendered to Grant at Appomattox Courthouse, thousands of speeches have been made honoring the sacrifice of our brothers and now increasingly sisters who have made the ultimate contribution to our national well being. We, all of us here at Capital City Unity, humbly acknowledge this incredible gift given to us by our fellow Americans. Indeed, we acknowledge and honor the death of every soldier and sailor anywhere in the world. For what leads a person to take up arms is a universal impulse, regardless of one's country or creed. Still, tomorrow's Memorial Day is a uniquely American occasion. And I'd like to mark it by sharing what is perhaps the most profound commemoration of our fallen soldiers ever offered. This commemoration was made during the Civil War itself. It was made at the dedication ceremony for the cemetery created for those who died in battle in the little Pennsylvania town of Gettysburg. So let us listen as a meditation 
to how Abraham Lincoln ties the living and dead together in a profound shared commitment to our greater good. We all know this, but let's listen to this with new ears as a Memorial Day tribute. Four score and seven years ago, he said, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war, and we have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who hear that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men living and dead who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that that government of the people by the people shall not perish from the earth. So tomorrow, let us take a moment to thank God for the hundreds of thousands of us who over the 245 years since the American Revolution gave their lives so that we, the living, their surviving compatriots, family members, friends, can find inspiration from their actions and dedicate ourselves to being instruments of God's love and peace. So let us take a moment now in the silence to give thanks for all of those who chose to make the ultimate sacrifice. Well, it's now been 10 weeks since we were last together in our gathering spot at the El Camino Fulton Park headquarters off Cottage Way. Maybe you can remember where that is. Maybe you can remember what that space looks like. Maybe you can get the feeling of what it feels like to be there. Well, all around the state and indeed all around the country, things are starting to loosen up and places of worship are now looking to reopen. It's, till, it's still too soon to say when we will be able to gather again with one another, but we can at least detect light at the end of the tunnel. And so while we still remain apart, we hold the high watch together and affirm that where two or more of us have come together in the name of the Christ within, God is present, we are one, and we feel together with one another. And so... We see each other, even in this moment, in our mind's eye. We see each other, brothers and sisters, on the journey together, the smiling faces, the expectant parents and grandparents. We see those of us in stress or sickness, the ones who are growing impatient or who still have doubts and fears sneak up in the dark of the night. We know who we are. And we commit to being strong where any one of us might feel weak or ill. We commit to stand for one another when each of us is having difficulty. 
We do this because we know that we lean on God to support us in difficult times. And so we affirm, as was written in the book of Proverbs chapter 3, we trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding. In all ways, we acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. We trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding. And so even though we cannot gather with one another physically, yet we affirm our embrace of one another through our trust in the indwelling, loving Father, Mother, God. Now, one person who made this commitment to trusting God with all her heart was our co-founder, founder Myrtle Fillmore. And I thought it would be another perfect marker for Memorial Day to revisit her story of how when she in all her ways acknowledged God, he directed her path according to her explicit belief. And she wrote about this a few years later, and I'd like to share her words with us today. She wrote, I have made what seems to me a discovery. I was very sick. I had all the ills of mind and body that I could bear. Medicine and doctors ceased to give me relief, and I was in despair until I found practical Christianity. I affirmed my beliefs, and I was healed. I did most of the healing myself because I wanted the understanding for future use. And this is how I made what I call my discovery. I was thinking about life. Life is everywhere, in animals and in people. Then why doesn't life in the animal make a body like a human's, I wondered. Then I thought, the animal has not as much sense as a human. Ah, intelligence as well as life is needed to make a body. Here is the key to my discovery. Life has to be guided by intelligence in making all forms. The same law works in my own body. Life is simply a form of energy, and it has to be guided and directed in a person's body by his or her intelligence. Well, how do we communicate intelligence? Talking, of course. Then it flashed upon me that I might talk to the life in every part of my body and have it do just what I wanted. I began to teach my body and got marvelous results. I told the life in my liver that it was not torpid or inert, but full of vigor and energy. I told the life in my stomach that it was not weak or inefficient, but energetic, strong, and intelligent. I told the life in my abdomen that it was no longer infested with ignorant ideas of disease put there by myself and by doctors, but that it was all alive with the sweet, pure, wholesome energy of God. I told my limbs that they are active and strong. I told my eyes that they did not see of themselves, but that they, they expressed the sight of spirit and that they were drawing on an unlimited source. I told them that they were young eyes, clear, bright eyes, because the light of God shone through them. I told my heart that the pure love of Jesus Christ flowed in and through its beatings and that all the world felt its joyous pulsation. I went to all the life centers in my body and spoke words of truth to them, words of strength and power. I asked their forgiveness for the foolish, ignorant course that I had pursued in the past when I had condemned them and called them weak, inefficient, diseased. I did not become discouraged at their being slow to wake up, but kept right on, both silently and aloud, declaring words of truth until the organs responded. And neither did I forget to tell them that they were free, unlimited spirit. I told them that they were no longer in bondage to the carnal mind, that they were not corruptible flesh, but centers of life and energy omnipresent. Then I asked the Father to forgive me for taking his life into my body and using it so wastefully. I promised him that I would never, never again retard the free flow of that life through my mind and my body 
by any false word or thought, that I would always bless it and encourage it with true thoughts and words in this wise work of building up my body temple, that I would use all diligence and wisdom in telling it just what I wanted to do. I also saw that I was using the life of the Father in thinking thoughts and speaking words, and I became very watchful as to what I thought and said. I did not let any worried or anxious thoughts into my mind, and I stopped speaking gossipy, frivolous, petulant, angry words. I let a little prayer go up every hour that Jesus Christ would be with me and help me to think and speak only kind, loving, true words, and I am sure that he is with me because I am so peaceful and happy now. I want everybody to know about this beautiful true law and to use it. It is not a new discovery, but when you use it and get the fruits of health and harmony, it will seem new to you and you will feel that it is your own discovery. This is the founding message of our co-founder Myrtle Fillmore the practical means by which she became in touch with the life, love, health, vigor of God that is our birthright, that is flowing through us right here, right now. And so just as Lincoln urged us to take inspiration from the honored dead at Gettysburg to recommit ourselves to a new birth of freedom for our country, let us today take inspiration from Myrtle Fillmore to recommit ourselves again today to the rebirth of the Christ consciousness within our bodies, within our minds, within our souls. And as we let go and let God, surely we will experience the truth that God's goodness and love will follow us all the days of the rest of our lives, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And so now let us continue as we come to an end of our time together. Let's continue our prosperity practice by sharing in the circulation of our good with each other in this ministry. And this includes our financial good. Prosperity never results from hoarding, which is a belief in lack and limitation. Rather, prosperity manifests in sharing and investing in more of our good. So we thank each of you for supporting this ministry financially throughout these 10 weeks when the basket cannot be passed physically. When we cannot hear Sharon play wonderful music as our ushers go up and down the aisles. But we can still share our checks or uh, arranging for electronic transfers of funds. And I acknowledge all of those who have been doing this during this period. Your generosity is greatly, greatly appreciated. So let's take our offering in our hands, whether it's physically there or virtually, and say our prosperity affirmation. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. God is the source and I am the channel. We thank you, God, for this boundless prosperity that is part of the discovery of the great Unity School of Practical Christianity. I want to extend a special invitation to everybody on this call to join us in our midweek prayer service this coming Thursday morning at 9 a.m. using the same Uber conference call-in number. And now as we bring our time together to a close, let us stand and form a virtual circle, and together we will sing our closing song, Only Power. Gordon?
Thank you. You all sounded wonderful. So now I'm going to unmute all of the microphones so that we can share our closing prayer. And before we do that, thank you, Connie, again for the meditation. Thank you, Gordon, for managing the sound. Thank you, Sharon, for doing the recording. And thank you, everybody, for being here. Let's say together our prayer for protection. Together. The light of the the power of 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 the